Would you say that the room has been this year without Jalen and Jabari and you kind of having to be the role leader and the guy with the most experience in the room? Uh, it's definitely been a little different in terms of culture. We're establishing a new identity, you know. Obviously, we've been in that room kind of since Coach Hype has been here, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, last year was a little easier to share that workload with them, you know, but now you have to be more intentional and more detailed, you know, having the most experience. A lot of people not really having experience at all. So just being a motivator and make sure I've been the same person every day. But just taking the role I had last year, just taking it to a new level. Though. With Cam kind of working his, his way back, you know, just kind of how confident are you in guys like Deshaun Bishop, and Cleveland Keith, some of those guys behind him? Oh, yeah. Um, it's good. You know, they, they show themselves every single day from last spring to this spring, you know, um, going into this fall camp, they take advantage of every opportunity, you know. The mindset they come in with every single day, um, I don't question at all the work ethic they'll have. So it'll just be about getting game reps at that point, but I know they'll be ready. How important is it for those younger guys in the running back room to develop at kind of an exponential rate to be able to give you guys depth behind you and Cam? Um, no, it's, it's definitely good. Um, getting those reps in fall camp, I mean, that's, that's important, all those. Coach does a good job with delegating those reps, but that's the closest they're going to get to, you know, uh, game day. But we do a good job. Coach Hypo does a good job just making sure everything is like game day and we practice with that intensity. So um, they take the attention to detail well every single day. So I have no doubt in my mind, like I said, that they're going to show that on the field. What do they need to demonstrate in camp just to say that they're ready? Because, I mean, they're sort of taking over the role that you had. What do they need to show in camp? Um, just basically that they could operate without coaches being out there. Um, you know, more than operate, but be kind of a game changer. Um, go in there, uh, know their assignment, know where to get lined up. Um, and then coach, coach likes to say, you can tell how you are when you're in the game, if the energy flow, flows, the energy changes. So if they're in the game and they, and offense moving good, tempo's moving good, things like that, all indicators, you know, how does the whole offense play when you're in the game? You know, so it's just, just being detailed, being uh, mature, no matter how old you are, and just going out there and attacking every single day. Last year, the snaps were split. They weren't in thirds, but they were pretty close to that. Is, it, is that when y'all are at your best? Like, should should it be divided that way this year, or should it be a lot of you and a little of somebody else? Oh, uh, that's not my call. Uh, you know, um, as a coach's call, I think I think last year was a unique position. You don't really run into that much. Um, in college football and we talked about that but you see it like some some more programs are lucky enough to have like one like one or two guys but i mean i believe any one of us could have started at any single time if you needed to and there would have never been like any drop off but th that's a unique situation i don't think that happens much but it's not my call to say how much they should play um other people or how much they should play me i, I just go out there and compete my best and you know i don't obviously don't want to get taken a lot of people looked at that Kentucky game, particularly the second half, and said that's when you showed you can do it every play, touch the ball every play, not come out of the game. Did it show that to you, or did you already know you could do that? I knew that. I knew that before. Um, I had that confidence in myself starting the season. You know, um, I just told myself I'd be ready for every single opportunity um, that was given to me, every single play, every moment. So I think it showed a lot of other people, but something that I already knew. You know, I just needed the plan and the platform. What areas of your game did you focus on this offseason? Um, route running, doing more out of the slot. Um, pass protection when you can. It's hard to do that when you're not actually practicing, though. But, uh, and just actually um, heightening my, my IQ of the game itself, you know. Um, I feel like a lot of running back stuff is secondhand nature once you continue to practice it. So I began to learn what everybody else does around me, especially defenses, so that can make me a better player uh, while I'm in the backfield. How do you kind of recreate a culture inside a room when there are a lot of young guys coming in? Uh, you take the culture that's already been established by Coach Height, the overall culture, and then, you know what I'm saying, obviously since I've been a part of it, um, that 22-year, great year. Um, last year was a, a, a good year too, but you, you take that culture that we've been established and, you know what I'm saying, you invite them into it, you know, it's just willingly. And eventually, you know what I'm saying, they'll buy in, you know, and it didn't take long to buy in. Like Peyton got here, um, even when he was hurt in the spring, he was locked in, ready to go. You can tell he has a fire in him. He's ready to get out there and get some practice, get some snaps in, you know. So um, I think more so just outside of our room, the culture that we influence as a team just transcends into every single room. So it made it easier. I didn't have to do much but be myself. What uh, stands out to you about Deshaun Bishop? Just his uh, calmness and composure and uh, 
probably his mentality, you know. He got like a dog mentality, he don't say much. But he gonna go out there and he gonna play with passion and energy every single play. And uh, uh, that goes unnoticed um, to a lot of people who probably don't know a lot about him. Um, he's not, you know, he's a Knoxville kid, but got hurt last year. But man, like, you don't gotta worry about him. Tough, you know what I'm saying? He gonna give his all every single play, and he gonna be that tough running back that you need. And what did you see from Cam, despite having to deal with an injury and rehab throughout the offseason? Um, just seeing him mature in in many different ways. Um, he was kind of in that role that Jabari was in last year, same shoulder, but um, locked into the meetings, asking questions. You know, um, when he did get a chance to come out there and watch practice, he uh was into it and helping. And, you know what I'm saying? So he's always locked in and really preparing himself for a moment that he doesn't have to get back to a point where he, he feel like he dropped off, you know? I have no doubt in my mind when he gets back rolling, he's going to be ready to go because that's how he handled the whole offseason. No longer having someone to look up to in terms of experience, having more experience than you in the room, were you kind of prepared for that adjustment and how much of an adjustment has that been? Uh, I, I would say I prepared for that adjustment because um, Although we had Jabari and Jay Wright last year, they were both kind of quiet at, at times, you know what I'm saying? Jay Wright spoke out when he really needed to, and Jabari, you know what I'm saying, he's a more one-on-one -on -one guy. So last year I was kind of in that role um, with the whole team too where I did speak. That's just my mentality. So I think I was ready for that role and even a bigger role when, when it comes to the leadership on the team. Um, I knew that was coming, so I prepared myself for that before even last season started. When you look back last year, how would you grade your pass protection? Um, see, I actually saw a lot of improvement in my pass protection. A lot of people don't know what goes in and what goes out. Um, who actually is my guy that I need to block and who the offensive line IDs. Uh, if you want to go back and look at the film, um, there was no real bust from me in pass protection. Um, that was my job, but it may look like that, you know, but we all play as one team. And if the quarterback gets touched, that's on all of us. But a lot of people don't see the work that I put in and the intention or the intentionality that I took from my freshman year to my sophomore year and the steps that I'm gonna take this year in pass protection because it's easy to just sit back from the TV and um, you know, when you don't know what's going on and say uh, somebody messed up. We don't know the idea of the plays, but you know, we'll show y'all again this year that, that we're gonna do a great job protecting Nico and keeping him up so he can throw the ball out over the field. Does that kind of rile you up when you hear people talk about pass protection? Uh, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You let it get to you enough to where it um, it motivates me, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's just like, people gonna talk, people gonna speak. I try not to look at it, you know, um, but my coaches know what I do. Coach Hype has actually, you know, uh, commented on my pass protection multiple times, I think at SEC Media Day too. Um, told the strides that I took in pass pro, so um, all I care about is the, comment, uh, the comments from my coaches, you know? So if I'm on the right page and they tell me I'm on the right page, then I'm on the right page. What about the rest of your game? What, what have you done to, to be ready for what should be a fight? It'll take a lot, of, a lot more work this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, putting on weight. Uh, I'm around like 201, uh, 202 consistently. Um, so that, that'll be good just in terms of longevity of the season. You were what last year? Uh, last year I was 190, 190 the whole season. Um, so I put on about 11 pounds after the season. Um, so that was like a big thing. Then, like I said, route running. Being able to use me in different uh, different aspects of the game. Um, I would work on my second level moves a lot, just make it harder for me to tackle. And uh, like I said, also sharpening my IQ of the game. So I you know, know what everybody else is doing around me. It makes me better as a player. What have you seen from Nico in terms of that too? Really? He's obviously trying to do that to grasp everything about the offense. How's that process gone? From Man, just just great. You know, he he accepted that role. Um, I think you saw a little glimpse of it in the bowl game. He he's very calm for for the situation that he's in. You know, last year he was a freshman. He'll be like a redshirt freshman this year, obviously. But just um, calm, humble player who's taking up a more leadership role. He he's one of those quiet guys, but he's been um, accepting that role even more, even though he's young. Um, but his intention to detail how much he works. Every time I walk in the building, I always see him in Coach Hosley's office. Um, talking about football, going over football. So he's ready, he's locked in. And, you know, I have no doubt in my mind, you know what I'm saying? We all work together as a team, we're gonna make this go. What do you think, what, what do you think he can be as a player this year? I think he'd be really dynamic, not just a role player, you know, not, I think he could really have the um, the potential to take over as this offense. And you need a quarterback to do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, obviously we need to help him. It's gonna be times where it's gonna be a lot of, a lot of new things for him just cause the uh, experience look, but, I think he could be one of those quarterbacks like you've seen over the past years who get opportunities when they're young. And I think he could be not just a good player, but a playmaker nationally.
Dylan, do you know the game Start Bench Cut? You heard of that before? Start Bench Cut, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that with Tennessee jerseys. Okay. The ones you have on right now. Okay. Smoky Grays, all black. For the sake of the fans, I'm going to start this one so nobody comes at me. Traditional jersey. Start this one. Now you said which one? All black, Smoky Grays. I ain't gonna lie, I might have to uh, start this jersey, um, bench the black jersey, and yeah, uh, cut the smoky grades, even though it hurts me. Something about dark mode, I just love it though. Appreciate yeah. it. The new EA game, what was the first play that you played, and then also what Dynasty mode has it been for you? What team are you? And just give me your whole overall experience. The first, the first play that I did. Inside zone. <laughs> no, with Tennessee, I wanted to see how I moved. Um, wanted to see how I ran the ball. But uh, Dynasty was been fun. You know, been playing with, um, obviously, I use Tennessee. Um, but we all play together, too, all our teammates and stuff like that. So it's just fun. It's actually crazy. You, have, you used to have to wait till um, you get to the NFL to be in the game. But it's crazy looking at yourself and seeing how much they actually got right. Like, they got everybody dripped to the T. Like, <laughs> no, nah, but that was, that was fun. Do you think your overall should it be better? Are you working on getting your overall better? And what is it? Uh, I'm not too worried about what a game says. I actually thought it was higher than what it would be just because people like to underrate me. But um, I think my strength was a little low. Uh, I think they just had to take away from some category. But, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead in real life and, and play real football, you know, and then I think everybody else will see that. As a vet, uh, how has it been mentoring the younger backs? Anyway? Oh, it's been great. Um, just, they come in ready today, they make it easy. They come in every single day ready to work. Um, in meetings, real mature, take notes um, out on the field. Uh, they push me to be my best, you know, so it just takes nothing for me to walk in and be the same person every single day and just get that work ethic. So they make it they make it easy. Dylan, are you keeping up with Joe or, or Jalen or any of those other guys as they're kind of going through their NFL journeys right now and just kind of watching that from afar? Yeah, definitely. I, um, you know, finding times to hit them up with all our schedules is kind of hard, but um, I definitely, you know, see see what they're doing on social media. I had the opportunity to talk to Jabari and just ask him how's it been for him and keeping up with Jay Wright and Joe. But yeah, so uh, man, I'm I'm wishing the best for him. I'm praying for him because I know they all about. They say that Jalen and that Miami offense and, and just with the with the backs that they've shown can be good. What do you think he his ceiling could be at the NFL level? Man, it's high ceiling. You know it. Um, might be a, a long way before he gets there because it's so high. You know, a, a lot of people don't know how much he can do. Um, real explosive, physical running back. Um, you know what I'm saying? Low body fat percentage. So everything, he's just real lean, real fast. You know, he showed that at the combine. A lot of people didn't know he was that fast, but I practice with him every single day. So, um, but he just got a dog mentality, kind of like similar to Deshaun Bishop. Don't say much, but really go out there like ready to work every single day like and you gonna know when he step on the field so and no shock in my mind I'm, I'm I will see his role start to develop as the season go on because that's just the type of player he is he gonna find a way to get better how cool is it to see Brew get back in the swing of things for you guys man amazing he's one of the best leaders on the team and I know he uh had his uh trials and tribulations with you know just everything but man he, he's just such a fighter um he went through kind of some things that a lot of people don't know too um, last season, but seeing his mindset, the way he was able to balance that out, and him finally getting a chance to get back around the team, everybody just feels the energy. The receiver room for sure feels the energy, but he, he's a great coach at that too when he's not, um, you know, when he wasn't really in the mix, but definitely a person we needed to get back in the swing of things. Sure. You mentioned uh, Deshaun, you know, a Knoxville guy. Is Are the, the your teammates that are from Knoxville, kind of, is there a different vibe about them, just knowing that they've got a, a little extra pride to represent this team? Uh, I think so. Um, it, it's hard to really tell. I think I think we all kind of got the same mentality, but um, uh, I don't know. See, Deshaun's real quiet. You know what I'm saying? So, and we don't have too many people from Knoxville, but uh, I, I definitely would feel like they definitely have a, a deeper passion. Everybody knows them for real too, so that it has to be fun. To, play for your home city. Who has the best chain? I saw Nico had one with an eight. No, Mari Thomas always has one. How would you rank them? Uh, um, I like, uh, what big old had the wave or the zero? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, that was nice. Um, I don't know. I think a, a lot of people got a lot of nice chains. I think mine is very different, though. I tried to do it. Um, so I put the rose on there. It's one of my favorite symbols. Um, but, you know, everybody has a nice chain.
What about the rose makes it special? Oh, I always loved the poem from Tupac Shakur, The Rose That Grew From Concrete. Um, he said, long live the rose that grew from concrete where no one else even cared. And um, I told that story a lot of times, but um, the concrete just symbolizes the struggle. We're all entitled to our own struggles in life. No matter where we come from, we all go through things. And although the rose that grows from the concrete isn't pretty and the petals may be falling off and the vine may be a little withered, it still grew from concrete and it's still standing. So it, it's just a symbol to me every day to keep going no matter what comes uh, in my life or hardships come in my life. Uh, so it, it, it's a strong plant can endure, can uh, withstand a lot so how has that encouraged Last or inspired one. you in this role now taking first team snaps being that number one guy for this team oh uh, man e every single day I have a poster like that in my room I wake up I see it every single morning um, I'm big into things like that um, I'm big into reminders that reminds me of my faith and my um, my values in life but uh definitely need stuff like that every time I put my feet on the ground in the morning to get me going thanks Dylan awesome. thanks for thank you what was your poster oh.